Hey guys, I'm Dov, and welcome to the Vampire Coast. Yes, indeed, it is with great pleasure I bring you an early access look at the Vampire Coast. Of course, on my particular channel, you're going to be getting the multiplayer uh, highlights in particular. We're going to be taking a look at some multiplayer battles featuring the Vampire Coast over the coming week. And, of course, once they're released, we're going to be diving into the full patch with all of you. So, let's get started here with this first early access look at the Vampire Coast. So, first things first, let's get this right out of the way. This is not your mama's vampires. <laughs> you know, there no Isabella here. These guys com play completely differently from the Vampire Counts that we all know and love. Um, they are a completely different faction. They do have, of course, a few minor similarities, but on the whole, their play style is completely different. And so let's get that one thing out of the way. This is not a reskin faction at all. This is a completely unique and, uh, yeah, very cool new faction. Com uh, completely unique in terms of, uh, both its play style and its aesthetic and everything very very cool stuff so let's get to the builds here as the battle is already getting underway we've got Count Noctilus here one of the legendary lords for the Vampire Coast leading the way for my army he's on his Necrofex Colossus mount which by the way great job to the modelers and artists at CA uh, everyone involved the animators just everyone this thing looks awesome and it is disgusting which I guess is kind of the point. Uh, Noctilus himself looking very fly as well. Very powerful character. Probably one of the most powerful characters. Him and Luther Harkon, I think, are really going to be your go-to uh, two legendary lords for the Vampire Coast. But we've got another uh, Necrofex Colossus here. Big artillery monster. We've got a whole zombie line. Uh, zombies with pole arms, which no doubt make the Vampire Coast... Uh, vampire Counts... <laughs> That's going to be terrible. Uh, the Vampire Count's very, very jealous. Um, I mean, these guys, they don't have the best stats in the world. I mean, they are just zombies, but they do have armor-piercing anti-large. Uh, reasonable stats. They're cheap, and uh, yeah, the anti-large bonus in particular, 13, definitely helps them out. Um, we've also got some zombie gunnery mobs with handguns so zombie handgunners basically and we've got a whole bunch of them five of them and a few things to note about these guys very briefly they come in 120 unit models so you get a huge volume of fire of armor piercing damage there are some other variants that we'll have a look at later on down the line but uh, in particular we've got the regiment of renown version of this specific variant the black spot so you'll see is a lot of these guys kind of have a little bayonets attached to their handgunners all of these guys have bayonets, and they know how to use them. Uh, that translates into charge defense against large, armor piercing, anti-large uh, in melee, and better combat stats than your typical uh, zombie handgunners. So these guys are a unit of handgunners that can sort of protect themselves. Uh, 120 unit models, armor piercing, damage, of course, they're more accurate and have a better fire rate uh, because they are a regiment of renown, but uh, yeah. That's pretty much it. My army is very straightforward. Just a whole line of five zombies with pole arms, whole line of five zombies with handguns. One of them is the Regiment of Renown. And we've also got this hero here, a Morngul Haunter. So he's got armor piercing, anti infantry, heavy missile resistance, although only 50 armor, 45% missile resistance. So he's relatively tanky against missiles. He also has stock and vanguard so it's gonna be uh, very tricky for your opponents to shoot at early game and once he get it gets into melee he is an absolute powerhouse heavy armor piercing damage uh, pretty decent leadership he also has a hunger so he'll regenerate while he's in melee uh, he also has chilling aura minus 36 percent speed or in an area of effect a very useful control tool and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I don't want to go into too much detail here I just mostly want to get straight to the action so uh, for Gojira's army he's got a mix of clan rats with shields in the front a single skaven slave some storm vermin plenty of storm vermin actually sword and board and halberds scattered around he's got uh, two warp lightning cannons a catapult Poison Wind Globet Ears, some clan rats in the back. I do also have some scurvy dogs, the dire wolves for the Vampire Coast, are running around in the back line trying to get a nice encirclement. You can see the Morngul Haunter has now come into view, and uh, the Warp Lightning Cannons are definitely putting a number on this Necrofex Colossus, which is not great. It's a pretty expensive monster, uh, but it can do a devastating amount of damage. 
But uh, you see there where it dropped below 50% HP, it just poops out a unit of deckhand mobs, you know, to swap the poop deck. Uh, sorry guys, I couldn't resist. I know, I know a lot of you just literally slammed your head in your keyboard, but... Anyway, advancing across the line here, the zombies with uh, pole arms. One thing to note, and this is a, kind of a good showcase of this, is this faction is it's slow. They're really slow, just across the board. I'm pretty sure I'd, I would need to look. I mean, obviously, someone's eventually going to math it out, but uh, pretty sure this is the slowest faction just overall. Uh, <laughs> like on average because the zombies are apocalyptically slow and you really have very few fast attack units that being said um, the bats are one of them you can see them coming in to kind of tie down some artillery crew here uh, meanwhile the necrofex colossi are going to be doing counter artillery fire here mostly uh, trying to take down the artillery pieces themselves you can see summoned clan rats uh, this unit of zombie deckhand mobs that was summoned here was actually summoned by uh, count noctilus he can summon them at a very long range with his item um, you guys may or may not have seen if you've been watching Everchosen Battles and so on, but, uh, yeah, you can see my Necrofex Gloss is getting very low, but Gojira probably should have been targeting Count Noctilus this whole time. He's also on the Necrofex. He could have more or less been doing all of this damage to Noctilus, and now you can see the zombie gun line is online, so I'm gonna get in close and kind of get a nice cinematic view as this zombie gun line starts to open up here with the two Necrofex Colossi also fighting in. You can see, uh... Oh man, devastating volleys coming in there, and uh, yeah, oh geez, the Necrofex Colossus in particular just does a devastating amount of damage. Uh, that right there was another ability from uh, from Noctilus, that bombardment actually destroyed one of those artillery pieces. And the Morgul Haunter comes in from the side, he actually causes terror as well, I mean just... Just look at him. Of course he causes terror. Why wouldn't he cause terror? That's free. He's huge, too. Look at these zombies compared to him in just in terms of size. Like, this is a big boy. <laughs> Holy crap. So, yeah, he comes in, terrifies away the crew. The zombie gun line is going to start to open up on this group of storm vermin that's fighting here uh, with some clan rats against these zombie gunners. A little bit blobbed up here. We're definitely going to try and punish them for that. And just look at the volume of fire. I mean, it is a constant barrage of shells. Um, you know, of a lead shot, I guess would be a more appropriate term, but just endless amounts of volume of fire, and that's really what it comes down to for uh, Vampire Coast. One of the main kind of attributes that you guys are going to have to get to know is these guys have a devastating barrage. Definitely, instantly one of the strongest missile factions in the game. That being said, I already pointed out one of their major, major weaknesses. They are apocalyptically slow, um, which means... It, Mistakes in positioning, especially with your zombie units, are going to really cost you because it'll take forever for you to try and reposition. Uh, that being said, you know, the fact that you can just shoot your opponent uh, means that you don't probably have to move around too much. Uh, you do have some key mobile units that can kind of run around and do some damage. We'll talk plenty more about them, of course, over the coming weeks. But, uh, yeah, just this unit of clan rat spears here, just getting the full DACA line of the uh, zombies. So yeah, you know all those all those games you play where you shoot zombies in the head? Well this time the zombies are pissed. They've got guns and they're gonna shoot back. And there's a heck of a lot of them. I mean this is easily 600 plus zombies just in this gun line right here. Uh, the zombies with halberds definitely not faring quite so well. Uh, thankfully we do have the uh, deckhands summons to help pad out the numbers here a little bit in the front line because they these guys are pretty bad in melee. They're better than Vampire Counts zombies. They're also more expensive. I mean, granted, they have better weapon loadouts, too. But, uh, yeah, they're they're still not great. Thankfully, we've got plenty of the elite units to support here. And the ranged fire is impressive. You can see both the Necrofex Colossi just about used up their ammunition. Uh, Noctilus has been tossing down the Invocation of Nehek. Let's go ahead and just quickly zoom on over to his abilities as he very cinematically takes a shot there. Uh, he's got the hunger, so he regenerates in melee. Drown Dead is the summon uh, for the lore of vampires for the vampire coast. Since they have access to lore of vampires, they don't summon regular zombies. Instead, they summon deckhands. Of course, they have less charges because the deckhands are a little bit better. He's also got Invocation of Nehek, and that's it for the spell loadout in this particular battle. The Moon Dial allows him to summon two more deckhands, and this is the one that has an extremely long range. Um, he's also got that Bombardment you saw earlier, that Wraith Storm, which uh, I believe I'm going to call down another one, or I just tried to maybe on Skrulk. Um, 
I know at one point in this battle I tried to call down a bombardment on Skrulk and the Morngul Haunter had actually knocked him away, so he or knocked him down, so they actually didn't hit him. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, Noctilus, an incredibly powerful character, just finished off his ammo there. The zombie guns are online still. Uh, most of the zombie infantry, melee infantry that is, is gone. But uh, we have enough volume of fire at this point to finish off these tattered uh, rat units as they try and get in and compromise the gun line. There's just enough shots that they're really going to have a hard time even making it over there. And uh, you can see we're able to destroy almost all of the actual artillery models themselves, not to mention route the crews off, just because, I mean, the guns themselves will do a bit of damage. It looks like a nice warp lightning coming down on the uh, black spot there. But, uh, yeah, the volume of fire, these these guys will do damage to artillery pieces, of course, especially with that high of a volume of fire. And the Necrofex Colossi, naturally, will do a devastating amount of damage. But, uh, yeah, at this point... The Morgul Haunter actually gets finished off by Skrulk, and I was kind of surprised by this. Skrulk's not a pushover in melee, especially while he has that melee defense buff active. And uh, the Morgul's lowish leadership there, I think, with the Contaminated, definitely worked against him. And, uh, you know, the Warlock Engineer also supporting. That being said, Lord Skrulk did take a lot of damage there. The balance of power is just not there at this point. And, uh, oh, Skrulk, buddy. Oh, man, this is not good, Skrulk. You better, you better run, boy. <laughs> Noctilus is all kinds of angry. And, uh, yeah, hunting poor Lord Skrulk down, as well as the Engineer, just blasting him to Kingdom Come. But uh, at this point, Skaven are getting pretty close, pretty close to critical army losses. They did manage to actually get to the zombie guns finally, but at that point, they're just so tattered, they have to run away. So, very fun battle. Thanks to Gojira for playing that one with me. Hope you all enjoyed watching that first look at the Vampire Coast. And the reason I wanted to show you guys this particular battle, I have several, of course, I'm going to be showing you over the next couple weeks. But this particular battle I wanted to show you because... It really demonstrates the zombie gun line that the Vampire Coast can bring to the table. The double Necrofex with the five zombie handgunners. Uh, we'll have a look at some other powerful r missile units in other replays. But just in general, the zombie gun line is very, very real, folks. And it's very powerful. Uh, you can see the zombies with pole arms. Some of them actually did okay. 58 kills on a unit of zombies is never anything bad. But, uh, I mean, Noctilus himself, 151. He's an absolute powerhouse. The other Necrofex racking up 88, 95 for the Morgul Haunter. Definitely a powerful character, especially against infantry heavy factions like the Skaven and the Dwarves. I would say you always want to bring at least one, maybe even two, Morgul Haunters, especially if your lord is a cat. Master. Like if you bring Silostra or Noctilus, you bring two or two Morngul Haunters, one or two at least, um, against those two factions in particular. But we'll kind of play around. I imagine they'll be useful in other matchups as well. But uh, yeah, the gun line you can see got some good kills as well. 49, 69, 55, 38, and 54 for the black spot. Hounds did their job, and so did the bats of kind of bogging down the units in the back line. Some of the few uh, kind of mobile units you do have, and they are very light. Um, and, but uh, yeah, in terms of Gojira, uh, we were talking after the battle, you know, we're in chat together as we're playing, um, and we had both kind of theorized that maybe just going heavier with the ranged with the Skaven could work. The issue with the Skaven that they're going to face here in any matchup where they're facing the undead, it's similar with the Tomb Kings and the Vampire Counts, uh, your leadership is an issue, it's a major issue. But the thing about the Vampire Coast is because they're relatively light and, you know, they're also just painfully slow. They really don't have too many fast attack units. If you were to take, like, a super wide build with tons of slingers, uh, like slave slingers, like, well, you know what, let's, let's just go ahead and uh, jump in and theorycraft. And you guys might have seen on that replay the timer was actually counting up. That's an update that's been uh, kind of uh, not highlighted at least I don't know that anyone's particularly highlighted it and also the faction selection screen has been cleaned up a little bit it's uh, got these color highlighting so you can tell all the factions are together so you know you have all the high elves here lizardmen dark elves skaven and so on um, but yeah we were going to take a look at the skaven it's an interesting matchup and obviously it's pretty early road so this is very very much just theory crafting um, but I would imagine in this particular matchup, the bell would be useful, but I would worry about it being such a big target. Um, 
Skrulk, of course, is just competitive in most matchups. I would definitely say you're going to want the Clan Rat summon, although Clan Rats will just get routed off so easily. I'm tempted to just say Pestilent Breath and just try and damage the zombies with Skrulk himself. Um, and then you don't really need Wither. Maybe you take Bless with Filth as well, or maybe you do take the Vermintide uh, just for the Clan Rat summons. But uh, yeah, we'll grab both of his items. Um, let's see. The Terror Geists are a big danger for the Vampire uh, Coast. Um, so we're going to bring a Warlock Engineer as well, strip him of most of his stuff, and just take Howling Warp Kill, just to lock down the skies if necessary. We're also going to grab the Warp Stone Armor so he can kind of act as a bit of a AoE drain if we need him to. And then Shielded Storm Vermin are going to be pretty solid here. Uh, shielded Clan Rats as well. Just in general, we're going to want stuff with shields because it's going to be harder to shoot at. Um, you know what, let's actually go a little bit lighter here, and then we'll go a little bit lighter here, and we'll just bring a ton of slingers, and we'll go with maybe four slave slingers, let's also grab, uh, some night runner slingers, and some gutter runners, we want maybe two with poison and two without, and we have enough for maybe one more gutter runner. Something like this. Um, you know, you could always fine tune. You might want to bring some artillery so you could potentially cut down some of this is a pretty extreme number of slingers um, if you actually stop and think about it. So maybe we do something like this to make it a little bit more reasonable. You do bring the two cannons, although they are somewhat vulnerable to counter battery fire because you have just so many rats running around throwing rocks at the zombies. And the, the thing about this matchup is that the the zombies are never going to be able to catch your Skaven if you're on top of things. I mean, these guys, just their baseline speed is fast enough, even like the slaves and stuff are fast enough, that they're going to be easily be able to outrun your opponent's zombies. So my thought was if you just continually reposition and keep shooting with the slings and just wear them down and not really kind of give them that, that engagement that they want, it could potentially work. I would be curious to see if the Skaven can really outshoot the Vampire Coast. I haven't tried it, of course. I've uh, had this for only a limited amount of time, but there will be plenty of time to, to shape a meta in the days going forward. But uh, just some food for thought, certainly. Uh, something to think about. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this first look at the Vampire Coast. Um, in terms of themselves, uh, Noctilus, let's just kind of finish things off with uh, highlighting him as a legendary lord. He can, of course, take the Necrofex Colossus, or if you take him on foot, obviously he doesn't have the missile attack, but he does have a halberd, which means he has anti-lodge armor piercing, really good melee defense, 110 armor. The Necrofex Colossus just gives him so much more health. It gives him terror and that armor piercing missile attack that typically I'd imagine you're going to want to take him on the Colossus. But uh, in terms of his spell loadout, he's got the two that we saw in the battle, as well as Wind of Death. Of course, we all know Wind of Death. Uh, <laughs> Null Cost Mystifying Miasma, great control slash damage spell. Um, really nice for controlling heavy cavalry, and combined with the zombie summons, makes him a really powerful control character. And he's also got Withering and Pit of Shades. Again, Pit of Shades kind of a damage slash control spell. Um, very good against heavy, heavy cavalry once again. So I would definitely say that Noctilus is going to be a very good option if you're going up against cav builds. That cannon he has would be devastating in that situation as well. Um, yeah, Withering is pretty decent, but um, uh, the, ass, the the Moon Dial, that's this one, we saw that as well. Um, one thing to note about Noctilus, though, you can see fully loaded out, he is insanely expensive. I would typically only ever take him with maybe this loadout, maybe you cut Melkos if you really are looking for extra, extra points somewhere, um, but... One thing to note about uh, Noctilus, as compared to almost all the other Legendary Lords, there is one other exception, but they all, all the other Legendary Lords, including Harkon and Arnus Assault Spite, uh, and all the generic Lords, have this ability here, uh, Hornswaggle. So this is a, a single target debuff, quite powerful uh, melee defense armor and speed um, available, again, to all the Lord level characters. The hero level characters have the similar ability, a Taunt. These can be stacked. They are different abilities, so they can be stacked. Uh, this one just lasts a lot 
shorter of an amount of time. Obviously, has a shorter recharge as well. Um, but Noctilus does not have access to Hornswaggle, so something to keep in mind. He also doesn't have like Enfeebling Foe, so if you're really looking for a character sniper, he might not be the best option. Um, but in terms of control and you know range to damage, he is certainly one of the best and an incredibly powerful character. Um, just all around so hopefully you guys enjoyed this found it interesting and informative Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below if you did find this interesting informative or entertaining Be sure to share it with your friends it helps out the channel more than you know uh, Yeah, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time